Hi everybody, welcome back to class again. In this video, what we're going to be working with is a new topic called, whoa, not an eraser, unit conversions, unit conversions. There are not going to be any notes per se in the form of a Google Slides just because of how much writing this involves. I'm going to be making this video and I encourage you to take your own notes and refer back to this video when you need it. Now with unit conversions, there are two main rules. Rule one is called silly babies dancing. And what we're focusing in on are these letters, the S, the B, and the D. And what Silly Babies Dancing stands for is, the S stands for smaller unit going, and the B stands for bigger unit. So when you go from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you are going to divide. The other rule is going to be bright summer mornings. And again, we're paying attention to these letters here, the B, the S, and the M now. For bright summer mornings, when you go from the bigger unit to the smaller unit, you're going to multiply. So bigger unit to smaller unit, you're going to multiply. What I mean by that would be a smaller unit in the forms of, let's say, grams going to kilograms. Grams is smaller than kilograms. You could have said milligrams going to grams. But if you're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you're going to eventually be dividing. That'll be your final step. And the other way would be kilograms going to grams when you're converting. Now, the reason you have to know unit conversions is in science, we have formulas the same way that you have formulas in math. Now, with the formulas in science, they're very dependent on the unit of the, the measurement. So you have a measurement. Remember, a measurement has both a number and a unit. Well, there are formulas where it's very dependent on what the unit is. And if you measure, let's say, a mass in grams, you need to turn it into kilograms or convert it into kilograms so you can properly do the mathematics in the formula. If you leave it as grams, your answer is going to come out wrong because you didn't have everything in the proper units. Now, you're going to see this, uh, this little image uh, right here has been sent to you in Google, uh, Google Classroom. It should say conversion factors. It's under the unit conversion topic. What this is, essentially, it is a cheat sheet. This is essentially a cheat sheet. It shows you that if you want to go from meters to kilometers, and you can't really see that very well, so let's go with a brighter color. If you would go from meters to kilometers, you're going to divide by a thousand. If you go from kilometers to meters, you're going to multiply by a thousand. And this is very helpful whenever you're doing one step unit conversions, um, which is what we're going to be starting with. But when you start to get into other unit conversions, it will become a pro it, it becomes sometimes a, a crutch that you don't want to lean on because you don't understand the basics of it. So going into this, what I mean, um, and you'll see what I mean by this cheat sheet, is let's look at an example of 500 grams. And we want to know how many kilograms that is. We want to know how many kilograms that is. Well, if you used a cheat sheet, if you go through and used a cheat sheet, so according to the cheat, we're going to go, we're going to go look right up here, and we see going from grams to kilograms, we're going to divide by 1,000. So you could take the cheat equals 500 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.500 kilograms. There's your cheat sheet. That's how it's used, and it works well at times. But you don't understand the actual 
mechanics behind a unit conversion, which again, when you start getting two-step, three-step, four-step problems, you need to understand it. And you need to understand it even more because when you get into high school, you have to take a chemistry. And in chemistry, you have to do unit conversions, especially in a topic called stoichiometry. So let's look at an actual unit conversion. Let's go through an actual unit conversion here. So the first thing with a unit conversion is to start with what you know. You want to start with what you know. And what we know is we have 500 grams. So we're going to start with that at 500 grams. And what we're going to do is set this over 1 because 500 and 500 over 1 mean the same thing. And you're going to see the method to, that, to this madness here in a little bit. But the big thing is with this, you have now, you have a numerator and you have a denominator. So you have a numerator and a denominator now. So what we're going to do with the unit conversion, this little dot here, that little dot means, means multiply. It means to multiply. It's the same thing as a little x, but in chemistry I picked it up, and in science you see the dots a lot. We're going to multiply right here, and we're going to multiply right there. We're going to multiply by 1 but we're gonna be doing it by using a conversion factor. We're gonna use the conversion factor. We're gonna use the conversion factors that we see up here. We're gonna use these conversion factors. And because grams is mass, we're gonna be looking over here at mass. For the conversion factor to work, we wanna go from grams to kilograms. And we're gonna look, is there anywhere on this conversion sheet where we see grams going to kilograms. And yes, that would be right here. Uh, let's go right here. Whoop. Oh, it doesn't want to write on the picture. That's why. So when we look at it, we got right here, we got grams going to kilograms. And the reason that is multiplying by one is because if you have a thousand grams, you have one kilogram. And if you have one kilogram, you have a thousand grams. They're equal to one another. And because they equal each other, that means it's one. It's essentially multiplying by one. So after you figure out your conversion factor, you have to start placing the units in the proper spot. And you're going to want to cancel this the same way you would in a math class. So in math class, you get 2x over x. If you get 2x over x, the x's cancel each other out, and you're left with 2. We're doing the same exact thing, but now we're going to be doing it with units of measurement instead of X's and Y's and W's. But they're still letters, they're just now units. So in the numerator, right here, you see grams. And if there's a grams in the numerator, just like down here, there's an X in the numerator, you need an X in the denominator. We need a grams in the numerator. So the first thing you should do with all of these steps, after you set your what you know over 1, Place your unit that you're canceling with down below. And there's a reason you want to do that first. And because this is in the denominator and this is in the numerator, they cancel each other out. They're gone. But placing your conversion factor, the numbers with the correct things, that's why you wanted to write the grams first. Up here, you see 1,000 grams. The 1,000 goes with the grams. That 1,000 will always go with that grams. So you know there's a grams of the denominator here. There's going to be a 1,000 with it. That means if you have a 1,000 grams, you have 1 kilogram. If you don't write this grams here first, if you don't write it, what happens is people ten have a tendency to put the grams in the numerator by mistake and the kilograms in the denominator. Well, then the units don't cancel. You want to make sure you always cancel. So always place that unit first and then place the numbers with it. So now the grams cancel again, and we get 500 times 1 over 1 times 1,000. 
And you will say to me, Mr. Krupa, you said silly babies dancing. When we go to a small unit to a big unit, we divide. Yes, we do. We do. But in this step here, all we're doing is simplifying all of the mathematical information, all of the data that we have. Because the next step would be 500 over 1,000. And in this step here, we have our division. If you get good enough at it and if you can keep everything straight, technically, this step right here, it could be skipped as long as you keep everything straight. And you could go straight from the conversion over to here. But with this, now we get 500 divided by 1,000, and that equals 0 0.500 grams. I'm sorry, not grams. Yell at Mr. Krupa for that. 0 0.550 kilograms. You had kilograms in the numerator here. That means that is your only unit left. The unit that you want, you want to end with it in the numerator. The grams cancel and the kilograms are left. That would be a one-step unit conversion because you only have one unit conversion factor going on. Let's do another one. Let's go from 3.3 meters, and we want to know how many centimeters that is. We want to know how many centimeters. Start with what you know. 3.3 meters, set it over 1. Well, now we need our conversion factor. We know we have a meters here in the numerator, so we're going to put a meters immediately in the denominator. And we're going to go up to our little sheet here, and we're working with length now. We're working with length. And we want to know, is there anywhere that it says we can go straight from centimeters or meters to centimeters or centimeters to meters? And yes, that would be right here we see 100 centimeters equals one meter. Oops. This will be okay. This is gonna be an example of a bright summer morning. This is a bright summer morning. So when we do this, we get one meter because up here we see that the one is with the meters. So if the one goes with the meters, 100 must go with the centimeters. The 100 must go with the centimeters. Meters cancel. And the only thing we're left with is now centimeters. And this here is your example of a bright summer morning where we're going to be multiplying. So now you get 3.3 times 100 over 1. 3.3 times 100 gives you 330 centimeters because that's the unit we were ending with there. So that's a bright summer morning. Up here was a silly baby's dancing. Let's do another silly baby's dancing. And I apologize for the back and forth there. Let's do another silly baby's dancing. We're going to do a silly baby's dancing here. I'll write it. Silly babies dancing. Let's go, so we have one of these. We want to know how many, if we have 0.25 hours, if we have 0.25 hours, we want to know how many, how much of a day that is. If we have 0.25 hours, how much of a day that is. We're going small to big, hours to days, hours to days. So we start with what we know, 0.25 hours, set it over one. Now we gotta figure out our conversion factor, but to help us, we know hours is in the numerator, let's write hours in the denominator automatically. So now we're going to time actually. We're going to time, and if we look, we actually see right here, one day equals 24 hours. So the 24 goes with the hours and the one goes with the day. So we get 24 hours equals one day. 
the hours cancel, you get essentially 0.25 divided by 24. When you plug that into your calculator, 0.25 divided by 24, you get a really big number here of 0 0.01041666667 days. If you get an answer like this, what I will do is tell you I want you to round at the thousandth place. So I would say it around here, or I might say at the hundredth, at the tenth. It depends on the problem. And if we round right here, our answer comes out to be 0 0.010 days. So there's another silly baby's dancing. And we'll do one more. And we'll do one more, and this time we're going to do the... bright summer morning. And this, again, will be another multiplication problem. So we're going to do the bright summer morning. We're going to go with this green here. And yeah, we'll just leave it as blue. Bright summer morning. And let's say we want to go from a big unit. So let's say we have 0.45 liters, and we want to know how many milliliters that is. We want to go from 0.5 liters, and we want to know how many milliliters that is. What we're going to do is start with what we know, 0.45 liters, set it over 1. Liters in the numerator, we need a liters in the denominator for sure to cancel. So we're going to go up here and we're going to find out that 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter. That's in our conversion factors. So 1 liter equals 1,000 milliliters. Liters cancel. 0.45 times 1,000, you get, so we get 0.45 times 1,000 over 1 equals 450 milliliters. So there's our final answer. Again, if you can keep everything straight, this step right here could technically be skipped but I want you to write it for now so that you understand how to write the units. So that it, these are all examples of one-step unit conversions, and they're one step because we only have one conversion factor each time. One conversion factor each time. One conversion factor each time. This seems a little confusing at first, but the more you do this, the easier it'll get. The things that you always have to remember, start with what you know, and always immediately, if there's a liters up here, you immediately write a liters down there. That's gonna help you keep the numbers straight. So always have them opposite diagonal so that you understand they cancel and then always match the numbers up. Up here in the conversion factors, it says 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. You can't put the thousand with the liters. Don't be doing that or it's really gonna mess up your problems. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me please feel free to email me um, and I'll try to answer them. I hope everybody has a wonderful day.